NAACP. Well, you heard me talking about the NAACP. We'll give you some more information about their upcoming uh, banquet that's taking place. But before we get to that, we are so honored to have in here the honorable men and brothers of the Nation of Islam. So without further ado, let's get right to it. We got Brother Walid Muhammad. Let both of y'all pick up those cups. And RTM down here. The brothers of the Nation of Islam. I just love saying that, man. <laughs> okay. Now, first of all, let's go with you, uh, Brother Walid. You actually, are you down here from Chicago? Yes, sir, right. I am. Tell, tell, tell us, uh, you know, uh, how, how you liking it down here in Florida so far, man. I love Florida, Mr. Pitts. I love the energy of the people, and I love the potential for the great unity. Once our people know what the time is and what is expected of, of the time, this place is, is phenomenal. I love the energy down here. Now, it's, it, it, if I'm not mistaken, Chicago is one of your largest and most powerful mosques. Yes, sir. Uh, tell is. us about the Chicago Mosque. The Chicago Mosque. And that little history there. The Chicago Mosque is called Mosque Maryam. It's also known as the National Center. It is indeed the headquarters of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Uh, it boasts... Uh, a, I don't want to give the membership number. Okay. However, the membership is indeed the largest in the country. Now, the the uh, the what must be done, the the time and what must be done. Where are we now as a community? What do we need to get done? The number one thing that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan desires that our people in our community and America in whole need to understand is the time. Right now, so many of us are doing things that are contrary to what is being demanded of us. The time and what must be done was a 58-week lecture series that mm -hmm. he'd done with the hope that America and our community would listen. Because in our humble judgment, Mr. Pitts, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a man that God has raised up for us and a man that in his mouth and in his heart is some of the solutions to our problems. Mm -hmm. Now, RTM, you are in Naples, right? Yes, sir. What is your role uh, with the Nation of Islam? Your primary, what do you do? Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things that I do with the Nation of Islam is very actively involved with the Farrakhan Twitter Army, the social media aspect, as well as being in our communities, mentoring and helping um, brothers such as myself in the di different programs that we have in the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. The Final Call newspaper, one of my favorite newspapers, uh, uh, is a source, of, a source of truth, a, bit, a source of truth. Why do we consider the Final Call the source of truth? Let's stay with you, get you involved. Yes, sir. Uh, well, as you know, with major newspapers, we have either you are on the conservative side or you are on the liberal side. But who's on the side of truth? And that's where we come with our publisher, of the Final Call newspaper, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has been on the side of the truth for over 50 years of service, of love to our people, standing on freedom, justice, and equality. Brother Walid, yes, where, 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 what is Louis Far the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan doing these days? We, I personally don't see him in the spotlight as much as I used to see him. Well, no, he's not. <clears throat> the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Mr. Pitts, is 81 years old. So the travel and the, the great uh, work physically and out, you know, what people can see is not there as much. In fact, in October, he suffered a heart attack. He's been in and out of the hospital for some time now because there are complications with some surgery that he took place to remove the effects of prostate cancer that he had. So, no, he's not traveling as much. But may I like to remind your viewers very humbly Here's a man that conveyed two, conveyed two million men to the mall in Washington, D.C. Right. About 20 years ago now. And then 1.6 million in 2000 and again 1.3 million in 2005. So, no, he shouldn't have to travel as much. But as my brother has pointed out, he now is on social media. He's on Facebook. He's on Twitter. He's on Flickr. He's on Instagram. Still working to get the message out. But I will say this. Just this last Sunday, he addressed the issues in Ferguson. He addressed some of the issues in the Gaza Strip with the Israelis and Hamas or the Palestinian people. And it was a major address. Unfortunately, though, we can't allow others 
with the hope that they would get his message out. And that's what our job is. OK, we're going to hold you right there. We're going to go to a break before we go to a break, Rick. Uh, when we come back, we're going to deal with Ferguson. We're just going to deal with, you know, the the uh, the whole justifiable homicide that we talked about. Uh, but before we do, how can people locally RTM get involved with the Nation of Islam? Yes, sir. They can visit our website, www.strengthofsoul.com. And you can also call our phone, our number, 1-800-945-9528, extension 1. Okay. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll deal with Ferguson and police brutality and the whole disenchantment between the black community and uh, the police department. Also, we'll deal with economic development. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, Southwest Florida. I know the Nation of Islam on Leap It's Live. Man, everybody's on. That's right. Everybody can come on Leap It's Live. We tell it like it really is. So that's why you tune in on Sunday morning, and that's why you're smiling right now saying, man, that Leap is Live, man, that guy don't care. That's right. The Nation of Islam, they are brothers. Now, let's go to the Nation of Islam. Uh, Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, has written a book, Justifiable Homicide, what came out in that book and how does it parallel what we're seeing today in society? Brother Walid. Thank you, Mr. Pitts. And may I say quickly, thank you for the honor and the privilege of being allowed on your show. We know you've been in service for a long time to our community with valuable information. Thank you, sir, for the honor of allowing us here. Glad to have you here. Now to deal with your question. Justifiable homicide is a transcription of three messages the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan delivered a few years ago. Justifiable homicide, American gangster, and executive decision. At the crux of his message is that young people are now justifiably being killed. Right. Justifiable, he says, is that which is excusable, that which is justified based on the principle of justice. Of course, homicide is the killing of one to another. Justifiable homicide, he teaches, is the result of a deliberate process by a body of persons that says it's okay to kill this one because based on the law of justice, they done this, therefore they get this. What do you say to those people say, hey, the majority of the uh, crimes and hom uh, things that are happening in a society are done by black people, so therefore it stands to reason that the majority of the incidents between police and the public would be between police and blacks. What do you say to that? Well, let me point right away to Ferguson, Missouri, whereas the young man, Michael Brown, the police released a video saying that, look at him. He was in the store. He took these cigars. He is wanted for theft. However, just in the last few moments, it now comes out that the young man indeed paid for the cigars at the counter. So what were you doing, Mr. Ferguson Police Department, and why did you do that? And even if he did take some cigars, does that mean that you have the right to gun him down? Well, you say, well, what about black on black crime? Well, I say very humbly from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan this. We don't manufacture guns. We don't have any drug manufacturing uh, plants in our community. So we are the result of someone else's idea. See, in America, we're taught to look at the effect, but we don't study the cause. So the effect is black on black crime. The effect is violence. The effect is gang uh, activity. But what is the cause? And why is it now that America, the penal institutional, kind of, pardon me, the prison industrial complex is the number one growth industry in America? Now, I, I, I want to go down that track, but before I do, on the penal system and, and, and the success that the Nation of Islam has had in the penal system. I have to, have to keep you a little brief on this one because we got about two minutes left. Yes, sir. Uh, economic development in the black community, in, the, in urban areas. What is the Nation of Islam policy on that? What are you trying to get out to the public? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in October of 2012 launched what he calls Muhammad's Economic Blueprint. Don't worry about the name Muhammad. It only means one worthy of praise. One praise must. That's Jesus. Muhammad is a beautiful name anyway, so you don't have to do that on Leap Live. Let's go. <laughs> well, what he's asking is this. Approximately, we have 16 million wage earners in America. If those 16 million wage earners just set aside one nickel a day, mm -hmm. five cents a day, a dollar, 40 cents a month, $18.20 a year, that will give us in a national treasury $291 million. Well, 
The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a man that you can trust. He's not going to take our money. But in that national treasury, we can buy farmland. Farmland is the basis of freedom. It's the basis of everything that we need. So we went back to the farm and bought up farmland and bought the supplies and the equipment that's necessary to farm, then we can do for ourselves. We can create economic opportunity in our communities with our young people. What do people need to do right now to get that process started? Visit our website, www.strengthofsoul.com. Now let's go to the penal system. Why is it that the Nation of Islam has been successful in, uh, I don't want to use the word rehab, but uh, been so successful with, with prisoners? Let's just go with that. Well, as you very The reason I don't want to use rehab because I just don't like the word, like you're rehabilitating somebody and you're really not. Go ahead. Well, as you are very familiar with, Minister Malcolm X was a product of the prison complex. However, in that situation, he was humbled. And because he was humbled, when he heard the message of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it struck his ear and it set his mind in motion. And he studied as much as he could. So the key to what you would call rehabilitation or those who are less fortunate is the knowledge of self. Got 30 seconds left. What's the misconception about the Nation of Islam? The biggest misconception about the Nation of Islam is that we teach hate, that we hate white people. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that hate is beneath a dignified Muslim. It's beneath a dignified Christian. We practice and strive to exemplify the principle of love. You just heard it right here. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who can't say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like the members of the Nation of Islam who are doing it. We'll see you next week on Leap This Live.